In the 70s, I would go every weekend and dive the reefs in the northern uh, part of Port Phillip Bay. Uh, and they were remarkable back then. I couldn't tell people how amazing they were, covered with algaes and lots and lots of different fish. And I went back 20 years later and uh, only to find that the urchins have exploded, um, wiped out all of the uh, all the algaes, and now you can barely see a fish anywhere. So it's an and it's an entirely different looking seascape now. Instead of being a garden, uh, you're going around a, a, a virtually a rocky desert. Marine pests have been introduced into Port Phillip Bay since the late 1800s. Large cargo ships, cruise ships, leisure craft, and yachts travel in and out of port from various locations around the world. A byproduct of international trade brings various forms of marine pests. Much like the introduction of the rabbit or cane toads into Australia, marine pests wreak havoc amongst our marine flora and fauna. Not all pests in Port Phillip are introduced. One example is the native black-spined sea urchin, which have caused the loss of extensive kelp forests in southern Australia their population boom is a result of overfishing and warming seas. Over 100 introduced species currently exist within Port Phillip. Marine pests are a problem just like weeds and pests are on land. I think people get the fact that blackberries or bone seed can choke out whole areas or that feral cats and foxes can kill really valuable wildlife. Exactly the same happens in the sea. So marine pests are exactly the same sort of threat. But because the sea's like a black box that nobody really sees what's going on, they don't really appreciate how important this is as an issue. Unfortunately, because of the long history of ships that come from other parts of the world, we have many species that are now well established uh, within the bay itself. A big challenge is how to stop new species from arriving, and that's the work of Quarantine and other organisations that work with the international shipping community to prevent things from coming. A perfect example is, is the Northern Pacific Sea Star uh, that came down from Japan in ballast water. Um, we found it here in, in Port Phillip Bay in 1995. Just an example of, of how rapidly these things can reproduce. By the year 2000, we'd estimated that the population in Port Phillip Bay was around 165 million individuals. There's just nothing to control them, basically. There's no natural predators. There's a massive food source there, uh, and they, the populations can explode. And so each individual female Northern Pacific sea star can produce between five and 20 million eggs every year. Some of our marine pests are here to stay. We'll never completely eradicate them. There's even crabs running around that came on the tall ships that are all through our habitats. For some of them, their invasive powers to swamp out or to smother our animals and plants, or the other ones as predators, mean we really have to try hard to contain them just within our ports. And that's why it's so important to stop them being carried leapfrog from port to port, unwittingly by people carrying them on their boats or their, their gear. We've been very active in working with particularly the boating community, the, uh, the dive community and the sailing community to try and better understand some of the issues associated with marine pests and how they can spread. Um, everybody who is involved and gets into the water or gets on the water can actually take, a, take an active role in preventing spread of marine pests from one part of the bay to another or, or from the bay to other parts of Victoria. Uh, by simply doing things like checking your boats, cleaning your boats with fresh water to kill off any marine species that might be there and importantly drying things out. So Parks Victoria has a, a few roles in managing marine pests. Firstly with new incursions it's really important that we try to eradicate it if we can before it gets a real foothold. In some of our areas like in our marine sanctuaries we want to actively try to reduce how much is there and that's been done over years with things like the Northern Pacific Sea Star. So in 2016 they found Undaria in Pope's Eye. So it's actually a noxious aquatic species that's found all over the world. It's native um, from Japan and Korea and China around there and they do eat it. But unfortunately it's also really good at spreading around to different places. So the reason we're removing it from Pope's Eye is it's a really high value um, part of our Port Phillip Heads Marine National Park. Um, it's been protected since 1976 from fishing, so even before the marine national parks and marine sanctuaries were declared. It's a really popular spot for diving and for tourism and we want to make sure that we keep the habitat intact for the species that rely on it. I think what a lot of people don't know is that Port Phillip Bay is a nursery and a lot of fish actually come in here to spawn and a lot of fish grow up here before they go out into the big wide world. The snapper have come here every year in October for all of history. They spawn and if we lose the place where those fish want to come and spawn, we could lose, as I said, a part of history and the snapper to Port Phillip Bay, to Melbourne, it's iconic and it's something we really, really need to respect and look after. 
Fortunately, we've got a community of divers and snorkelers, uh, many of whom are now starting to become familiar with animals and plants that don't belong in a particular system, and they report them to us. We also have our own monitoring programs. We have our science, uh, science team. Uh, we work very closely with universities and researchers uh, to try and better understand the values of some of these places. And in doing so, quite often our attention is drawn to the fact that some of the animals and plants that are there uh, shouldn't be there. We were already picking up sea stars before I joined as a member, and, but they used to go out every couple of months. We started wading and um, we're picking up so many and then we all got wetsuits, we started snorkelling and we saw how many there were, so we started on a monthly basis. Today we've picked up quite a lot of small ones, so we're picking them up before they've had the ability to breed. We understand we're never going to win and just we try and see it as weeding your garden. So you go out into the garden, you pull out the weeds, you know they're going to come back, but you make it look a lot better. So out there we're allowing our native animals to find a lot more food perhaps um, before the next wave of sea stars come in. I do a lot of snorkeling in St Kilda and I love it. I love looking at everything that's there. So, and I love this here in Port Melbourne simply because that reef is amazing. It's so close and there's lots of life there. And that's why I go down there because I love seeing what we find. Port Phillip Bay is a beautiful, beautiful place. We've got, we've got a lot of endemic species in there and we've got some beautiful environments. Although we have a large number of pests within, or marine pests within Port Phillip Bay, the future is still looking good for it. We can, we can actually do something to, to maintain the viability and the health of that, that system and, and improve that over the future. In the future, I would like to see Port Phillip Bay as a place where there's no pests from different countries coming in that are not native to, Australia, to this bay. And I'd like to see them um, not eating any of the animals and decreasing our population of our native animals.